Hi, welcome to another episode of the Visual Storytelling Today podcast. The show is designed for you, the marketer or entrepreneur, who may be looking for more effective ways to connect better with audiences through the exciting world of visual storytelling. We will introduce you to inspiring experts from diverse industries that bring fresh perspectives on how to capture attention, build trust, emotional empathy, and last but not least, drive business results. Enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Shlomi Ron, and the CEO of the Visual Storytelling Institute. Uh, we are a think tank based here in sunny Miami, Florida. And we are all about uh, bringing the gospel of visual storytelling from the world of art into a more human and purposeful marketing. So before we get started, I have a quick update for everybody. We just uh, transitioned our uh, six-year visual storytelling newsletter from uh, uh, his previous destination to, Met, to Substack. So I invite everybody to uh, check it out. It's uh, on uh, visualstorytell.substack.com and feel free to subscribe. All right, so on to the topic of today. So as you all uh, have been witnessing in the past year with all the action about the metaverse uh, after uh, Mark Zuckerberg's uh, announcements, uh, transitioning his uh, brand from uh, Facebook to Meta, there was a lot of brands that started uh, uh, creating their own metaverse experiences. And as I was kind of following this industry, you probably saw it uh, through my blogs and podcasts. Uh, it seems very interesting that uh, a new profession that's actually tradition architects actually entered the space and actually brought their amazing knowledge from uh, how to design 3D physical structures and translate that into creating those uh, immersive uh, 3D virtual uh, worlds. So I was kind of intrigued from a visual storytelling perspective about this journey and what architects can you know, teach us on how to translate visual storytelling experiences into 3D immersive storytelling. So to help me with that, I invited uh, Nicola Rutt. She's the founding director at Multi Studio in London. And what I really liked uh, how they define uh, their company, Multi is our name, refers to an open, collaborative, and pluralistic way of working, which to me, I think it's a great definition for, you know, when you try to build a metaverse, metaverse experience, you've got to be working across uh, disciplines and with vendors with different uh, capabilities. So with that, welcome to the show, Nicola. Thank you, Shlomi. Thanks very much for inviting me. Um, I've been listening to your podcasts and uh, I think it's a really interesting area that you're looking at here. So visual storytelling um, and and to invite me on as an architect. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely. No, we definitely, you know, been kind of uh, having some early discussions uh, regarding the metaverse uh, project I was uh, trying to uh, bring about. And but before we talk about uh, the fine details. Can you share with our audience a little bit about your backstory, how you get started in architecture and how you kind of uh, found yourself uh, involved in the metaverse projects? Sure. So um, my background, I'm an, I'm an architect. I've been an architect for 20 years. Um, I started working, oh, I've always worked in London. I started working 20 years ago um, for uh, a practice called Hawkins Brown, who were around 20 people when I joined and are now um, a top 10 practice, 350 uh, odd people. Mm -hmm. um, and I became a partner there and had headed up the workplace sector. Um, after 20 years, I decided uh, to leave to set up a new architecture practice. Um, I see. With other people. We're based in London and Amsterdam. And, um, and thanks for the introduction. We're yeah. called Studio Multi. Um, and yeah, we work at multiple scales and mm -hmm. we're open to multiple outcomes. Um, and collaboration is really important to us and just mm -hmm. working with different different creatives, um, people from different disciplines, because that serves to to create better um, better projects. Rounded view, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
so as an architect, I've worked on lots of different types of projects, um, including workplace residential um, education. But I settled on workplace because I was really interested in the way that people's um, working patterns were changing, largely due to the advancement of um, digital right. technology. I see. I'm seeing it across the world and a lot of um, changing work patterns have been um, uh, we're already there, but I think COVID and the pandemic mm -hmm. has kind of been a catalyst for a lot of workplace trends um, that I were see. already kind of happening before. Right, before right. Yeah. So, um, so the reason I'm here today and talking to you is, mm -hmm. is, is that visual storytelling um, is kind of really key to what architects do. We're, we're hardwired to communicate our ideas visually so, so let me stop you right there you know this is a question i ask pretty much every uh, guest on my show you know exactly that how you define a visual storytelling from your perspective as an architect um i think it's it's, it's about presenting ideas visually to take your um your client or your audience on a journey uh -huh. um and it's it has to be something that they can relate to. Yep. Um, I feel like it has to have depth and and it should make them smile. And oh, I think there needs to be there needs to be an emotional connection somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, I think yeah. we we tend to as architects, we do communicate our ide ideas visually um, through a mix of mediums. So um, you know, designing buildings is a very collaborative endeavour. Right. We go through lots of different stages. Um, we involve large teams of, we're, we're always part of a large team. You know, it's yep. never just the architect. So it's, um, there's usually a whole realm of different consultants, specialists, you know, I planning see. advisors and no, sustainability sure. people. But our role is primarily to listen to the challenges that the client faces and their aspirations. Um, so this is a great segue actually to maybe tell me if you can discuss a little bit about your work at Multistudio, what you exactly you cover. Um, so the work we're doing covers um, different sectors again. We're looking at, um, we're actually looking at some enlivenment projects. So it's where you've got um, places that are maybe um, lacking in something one of the projects we're doing actually our first project is a, a small um, old outdated shopping arcade um, in uh -huh. a very historic town yep. Winchester and we're looking at uh, up um, isn't it wise well, reactivating it actually it's bringing I people see. back to back to this arcade it's been um, you know there's a lot of there have been shop units that have been empty mm -hmm. Um, there's been some antisocial behaviour. It's not been performing right. very well. Businesses have been suffering. So our role has been to come on board and, and give it a kind of creative lift. Yep, yep. To yep. help attract people back to that area, to help kind of um, reinvigorate businesses. And, and when I say we don't do things on our own, this is very much working with the community, um, the community of businesses that are already there. I and see. every project we do involves working and, and listening and consulting with you know the communities sure in, within which we're working yeah so so we're doing that one that's a kind of public realm uh, project we're also working on a series of pavilions um at a, a business park mm -hmm. which has suffered uh, through covid and is now finding its feet and rebuilding it's always it's got loads of great things going for it um and we're designing um, a series of shared spaces to help yep. bring people out of the offices and, and bring people together so i think you could say a common theme of the work we do is is about bringing people together, together. wow that's yeah. phenomenal especially um, these so days you know with all the challenges in the workplace and the hybrid the remote and the challenges of bringing people back to the office so i can definitely see you know architecture playing a huge role in kind of shaping this uh, new you know spaces for them to feel you know great about uh, doing their work in their traditional offices <laughs> exactly and and everything we're doing um you know sustainability yep. is 
key to everything we're doing. And um, I, there's a, a system we use called Passive House, which we are trying to apply to everything we do to try and achieve the highest um, environmental levels. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So, but a lot of work, we do, we do new buildings, but we're also, uh, my particular specialism has been in repurposing existing buildings. Mm. So um, when I talk about this project in Winchester, that's about giving a creative lift to some outdated buildings. We're doing similar projects um, elsewhere to old warehouses, um, you right. know, kind of outdated offices. So it's, it's giving a new lease of life to projects. Now, um, where we've started working in the metaverse, that came through the same idea, really. It was rather than designing something um, that was, you know, mm -hmm. completely new and completely different, we were looking at, well, what if you had, what if you were in the metaverse and you stumbled across this kind of redundant warehouse and oh, you, you ventured see. into it and, you know, it looks kind of old and shabby and, and dilapidated, but you go inside and, you know, it's 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 something really um, surprising and unexpected that functions completely differently to how you, you might So the imagine. inspiration came from actual real experience in the real world of your work uh, reactivating a kind of environment that needs kind of a, you know, a lift up. <laughs> and exactly. Ex I see, exactly. that's Could interesting. You, there was a translation of something that I was already very familiar with and that oh. I enjoyed working with um, is that, that idea of something unexpected and some and I think when you're when you're looking at projects in the metaverse as an architect mm -hmm. um you know clearly you don't have all of those constraints that we have in the real yeah. world that you yeah. keep you know, the, the rain out and you don't need to worry about things falling down but that can almost go so far that you you end up with something that's not even recognizable right and you know you don't know where the floors finish and the walls start and and maybe that's okay, but for me um, and for Studio Multi, we approached our Metaverse project as something that was a subversion of a familiar um, environment. And I wonder... Industrial shared. And, and we, what we loved about it as well was the scale mm. and the ability to, um, to, to play with that. And did you feel like uh, the visual storytelling approach you apply for physical uh, projects was somewhat different when you worked on the metaverse project um yes and no i mean i think we've in many ways no actually mm -hmm. when we're doing a physical when we're doing an actual in the real world project um we have we have lots of different sort of areas to think about with the building because there's the functionality and the performance you know what does it do the scale and massing of the building yeah. its relationship to the street and its surroundings mm -hmm. um, and also its its appearance materiality and form and you might present um, you might tell that story in a series of um, physical models and in drawings right um, but the actual I don't see that necessarily as storytelling. I, I see that more as kind of informing the client about these sort of different I see. aspects of, of a building. But the storytelling to me is, is that emotional connection and what mm. connects the audience to the proposals. And so it's more about how the building is experienced rather than it's made of brick, it's this big, it sits next to right. you know, these buildings. Right. So, um, and it's not just about the connection to to the client and the people who are going to be using it from sort mm -hmm. of from the inside out it's also the experience of the people who walk past it every day because when you're designing a building it's there for yeah. you know, 50 plus years and right. it impacts everybody so there's a real social responsibility that comes with being an architect no definitely um, and I think that the storytelling has to has mm -hmm. to kind of address that yeah. so when um, yeah. So when we tell a story, we have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And and mm -hmm. for us, when we're when we're um, communicating our, our ideas about a building design, the beginning would be about setting the scene, uh, the yep. building context, who the surrounding community are, and how it's being used. If it's a reuse of a building, you're often thinking about the history of that building and what's its what's its previous story and how the associations it actually generates for people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the beginning. So you're kind of setting the scene 
And then the middle would be about how we're addressing the brief. Um, how's it going to look? How's it going to function? Oh. Um, and then I thought this is going to be like the constraints, like the conflict, you know, the kind of the, the scope of how you need to kind of uh, adapt uh, based on the constraints around. Exactly. And that's about how you're, how you're addressing the mm -hmm. brief from the client. But for, yep. for this bit, for the actual kind of the concept work, that's when we, we bring together, we have a whole kind of armory of different um, visual references and they're often borrowed from mm. uh, literature, from music, from art, um, fashion, you know, oh, wow. and so we really do, we, we reach out to a kind of very broad range of cultural references to help explain a design and a concept um, of a building to a client. So sometimes it's quite, quite unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's what we and I think that's what all architects do. We're kind of magpies, really. Right. So we're building up a story from first principles. We're using whatever cultural references we need to help tell that story. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also obviously use uh, examples of other buildings and say, you know, mm -hmm. it, it might be a bit like this and a bit like that. But it's it's more interesting if you've developed a story yourself rather than just saying we're going to design a building for you and it's going to look like this one that's been built in Paris a few years ago yeah um, so it's got to be original uh, thinking mm -hmm. yeah yeah um, and then I guess the next step the end of that story is then kind of next steps and just agreeing you know how do we how do we develop this now I see you know? so so maybe this is a good opportunity for for you maybe to share a few examples and maybe talk a little bit about your process and uh, you know yeah. what you kind of uh, contributed to the, to the project so i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna talk about the metaverse project now because that's okay uh, let's see if this comes up can you see that yep yeah. Yeah. yeah so this is um this is a building i worked on when i was at hawkins brown architects um, mm -hmm. and that, this is called Hiris that's at the Olympic Park, um, which is the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park in London. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's one it's a massive 1.2 million square feet, which is quite big for the UK. It's probably not that big for the States, but um, right. it's, a, <laughs> it's the conversion of the broadcast studios and the media centre um, on the Olympic Park. Mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, completely repurposed as an innovation hub and it brings together uh, businesses and education and cultural uses mm -hmm. um, and this was all um, all about collaboration bringing people together um, it had a big uh, umbrella of tech over mm -hmm. it so all the businesses here everything they have in common really is relates to the way that they are progressive in their use of digital oh, technology mm -hmm. and, um, and it's about and, and also it was about bringing people together kind of in the pursuit of innovation so it was it was really great to be working on a project that was about innovation and we could then apply that kind of innovation to the way that we thought about the architecture um, and um and the reason this slides here is because i've sort of developed this obsession with big industrial spaces and and you know huge volumes and the way that they provide mm -hmm. space for flexibility and and openness and creative thinking but I came across um, this lady, uh, Kadeen James, mm -hmm. who um, who then approached me. Oh, sorry, she runs a, a company. She set up a, a collaborative really called the Immersive Kind, mm -hmm. uh, which is a collection of yep. creatives. And um, you know her, Shlomi. I'm, I'm yep. Sure yep. She, uh, probably the podcast at some point, but she um, works across all sorts of digital platforms and um, bringing together creatives from around the world, um, championing uh, young artists female artists um from you know that's from awesome so she she approached me when we set up studio multi um she approached me and said look i'm really i've been invited to to uh you know design a gallery and to present to show nfts mm -hmm. um and and at the same time at studio multi we've been um designing this space which is a reuse of a, an existing industrial shed and we've been using this as a kind of test bed for ideas mm. um, and and so you she really kind of had it <laughs> yeah so she approached me at this time and I made that connection with Kadeen the fact that we'd met at here east um we already had that kind of connection of these types of spaces mm. so 
So we went off and started, I'm just going to flip through these very quickly, but we started thinking about what a virtual gallery could be. So we looked to um, Sci-Fi and uh, Seth, who is my business partner, and um, also my husband, he's, uh, you know, very interested in Sci-Fi and he actually pulled together a lot of these oh, wow. slides wow. about how we, how we yeah. can look to science fiction. I mean, I'm sure you've seen a lot of this before about that connection yeah no this is i find the metaverse but also about physical galleries and large spaces um you know and just thinking about well we can make this building as big as we want in the metaverse and it can sure. you know, hold a whole variety of different events um heroic space mm -hmm. um and this there's idea a, of there's a lot of work of metaphors, right, in order to kind of borrow from a, a different uh, discipline or art form and try to apply it to, to a three D structure, right? A lot of metaphors, a lot, of, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like I say, we have um, we actually use a program called Miro, which is a kind of pin board where we pin all our ideas up and we work through it. I see, and it, it just kind of grows and grows and grows. It's it's, mm -hmm. um, it's a great. Um, a great platform for that but yeah we collect all these images so um so we started looking at this idea of a linear armature and um, referencing the street in the snow crash metaverse oh wow and, you know um <laughs> this idea of a kind of potentially infinite space that could just grow and grow and grow and from this space we could develop a series of different um galleries which could be of all different shapes and sizes they could yeah be suited um, to different art collections. Um, so we came up with this plan and we felt the industrial building needed a bit of a sort of, needed a bit of color. And we had this idea about a rainbow runway that would run mm. all the way through. And because Kadeen's connection is very much with, um, you know, crypto fashion. Yep, yep. Fashion, um, which is something we hadn't been connected to at all. So she opened that up for us and, um, and so, we, yeah, we, we developed the Rainbow Runway. And then you can see we've got this kind of new space coming soon. So this is the line linear space that can grow and grow and grow. And then there's an infinite number of galleries that can be built off this space for new collections. Um, and then I'll just quickly run you through. So that's the front. Uh, Kidding wanted to have face on the front. So we kind of extruded it out of some <laughs> uh, stone yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, again or just an, and then we love this idea of rewilding and just bringing nature into the building like it's kind of taking over um yeah this is like the mix the mixing of a real life photography with the actual a uh, 3d modeling right so to, just to yeah. create a sense of uh, reality it is it mm -hmm. is so and these um so this this model and then these are some of the rooms we built off that main space. I see. Um, and then, so what happened then, we, we, we developed this design. It then, um, we then put it onto spatial mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it became a metaverse space. It went from being a three-dimensional uh, CAD model, which is something that we were used to doing as architects, which we, we do for pretty much all our projects. You know, we'll design something in CAD, we'll take our clients through it, we'll do a kind of a video that runs through. Um, right. But with the metaverse, the metaverse has opened up the ability to, you know, put on a headset or, or even just get on your um, device yeah. Yeah. and mm -hmm. just get straight going yourself. So, um, so this is the Immersive Kind Gallery. These are some views from it. This was a an exhibition by um, Gary James McQueen, and it was um, to celebrate the Jubilee, actually, and it was about the crown, and he did a um, an AR crown, which anybody could wear and then uh -huh. take photos of themselves. Oh, and wow. so it was about, you know, um, democratising the, yeah. uh, the crown. Yeah, I actually attended, you know, the, the kickoff and, uh, you know, it was packed, you know, it was hard even to get in, you know, it was amazing. Uh -huh. well, one thing I want to ask you about, if you go back to the previous one, yeah, you know, for, in storytelling, uh, there is a well-known principle, it's called unlikely combinations. And, yeah. and it, I'm wondering if 
it had a role in designing uh, this space because on one hand you think you know industrial structure like the one you, you're showing right now would host you know like a factory or what you accustomed to to see all, all over right but instead you actually placing there a fashion show which is like a something that don't belong but it, but because it doesn't belong it creates a new experience <laughs> exactly and yeah contrasting just contrasting yeah. ideas so, well that it goes back to that thing about the element of surprise where right you go through the front door you turn around and you just see something that you don't expect um mm -hmm. and you know i the technology you know this isn't um when we when we designed this in the studio when we used um rhino when we used twin motion and, and different rendering models mm -hmm. it looked much more realistic uh -huh. um i might think at the moment when you're when you take these models into the metaverse because they're seen because people are experiencing them walking around them um they have to render very quickly yep and yep. you don't get that you don't get that level of quality yet that matches the models that we can do um i see yeah you know, actually it's a different type it's a different type of process and a different type of software but i don't think it's going to be you know too long until the quality of this and you know the light you don't get the light and shadows at the moment but the quality of this i think will improve wow. greatly pretty, and, and pretty i'm curious uh, when you start working on this project what uh, were the business goals or the objectives the business we, i wouldn't say there was really a business goal with this i think it was um it, it was research really it was mm -hmm. trying something new it was seeing mm -hmm. where it would take us um, but were there any stated uh, like uh, design goals in terms of uh, target emotions? Uh, I think it was, um, well, I think it, it targets emotions in the sense that it's really immersive. Once mm -hmm. you go in and you're walking around and you're, you're talking to other people in there and you're looking at digital art that's moving on the walls whilst you're moving, it's yeah. really... Um, it's a different kind of experience. So mm. I think it kind of targets the emotions in that way. Mm -hmm. I think also the fact that it's, it is so open and that anybody can come in. Um, right. I mean, there are kind of invited events, but I just think that bringing together of, of a community um, with similar interests is, is really interesting. And I think you can, we could really push the limits of that. Yeah, and for anyone interested, it's still uh, active on the, the special uh, platform, right? Uh, yes. The immersive yes. kind. So, you, so everybody listening or watching, you can definitely check it out and walk around and see exactly what uh, Nicola is describing here. Really, you know, as an avatar and experience this in a 3D immersive uh, mode, basically. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the other part of it is you... You know, you're going in, you can dress up however yeah. you want um, with your avatar. I went on to Ready Play and Me and got um, an outfit, but people can, there's a lot of, I mean, these are quite low-res images because mm -hmm. I'm, I didn't want my computer to take ages to right. render. But, um, so they're a bit fuzzy, but people are coming in with some really um, mm -hmm. exciting outfits that they designed themselves, you know. So it, right. was, it, just, it just feels like a real community in there. And it's for the image I had here, so to go back, um, during Pride 22, yeah. 2022, mm -hmm. um, it was a celebration. Um, it was a huge celebration um, of Pride. And there was actually an event within the Immersive Kind Gallery, which was also projected um, on the screens, on the big screens at Piccadilly Circus. So you had oh, these wow. kind of groups of people. You had the groups of people from all over the world who were yeah. within the Immersive Kind Gallery, watching it on a big screen there with um, fashion being displayed on the walls. Um, and a DJ and, and then <laughs> simultaneously there was projections in real life with huge crowds of people um, in London so I just think that's kind of simultaneous transmission yeah multi-channel experience yep yeah, yeah yeah is, is, is something that I haven't um, come across before and it was you know it's a 50 years of of pride so I this see. was kind of just very um felt like a very sort of new experience. Right. 
So, so what would you kind of recommend maybe your top three tips for anyone, especially brands that are looking to uh, develop their own uh, metaverse experience and they need to kind of build together a team, obviously, you know, with architecture perspective in it? <laughs> I think, I think it's, it's about just being really authentic about what, what you, mm-hmm. who you are, what your message is, what your values are. Right. Um, find someone to build your space who mm-hmm. will really listen to you mm-hmm. and spend time understanding, um, you know, what you want to convey. Yeah. Um, I do someone with the same values. Mm-hmm. And then don't, don't feel like you've got to design something that's, you know, uh, like completely unrecognizable don't you know just do something that you feel mm-hmm. is a version of, of you that can be that can be subverted and that can be pushed in in the metaverse but um kind of strangely familiar i think is is a good way to go no for sure <laughs> yeah no and it, do you see any kind of a you know working on this metaverse project do you see any kind of misconceptions that uh, people around our voicing uh, that you might want to take the opportunity to kind of clarify? <laughs> um, well, we're very new to it, actually. And we're just yeah. working out. Mm. We're just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, criticism. And obviously I've sort of read um, both right. sides. I think, I think there's a, the democracy, the t- democratization is really interesting. I think the mm-hmm. fact that you can be in the same space, looking at something, um, with people from from anywhere is is really fascinating i think the the sort of quality and the speed at which things render and the sharpness is is only going to improve with time Mm -hmm. um but i i can see it as a really useful tool for architects really um to create a space to be able to to Mm. go in uh with end users with a client and and test things out and just say look you know is this working how do you find this space you know and you can be really experimental very quickly yeah. um, and that's different to what we're doing at the moment with fly throughs and so and so on um but i don't think it's a replacement for the going back to first principles hand drawing yeah um, you know finding these references building models i think that's 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 You're always got to be this almost the first step to conveying your ideas and, and getting that kind of emotional connection. Yeah. Now, this is fantastic. So I really want to thank you for, you know, the great opportunity to kind of get a glimpse into, you know, the brave new world of the architecture now in the metaverse. And, and I think it's, you know, the role of architects is only just going to grow as the metaverse uh, you know, will develop in both in computing power and capabilities. So before we, we, you know, we go, if someone has any questions and would like to reach out to you, how can they contact you? They can um, contact me, go, just go onto our website and um, there's an email address there. And I'm happy to, mm-hmm. to talk to people about this. Like I said, we are, we're kind of fledglings in this, in this um, world um we are you know we, we're still yeah. doing traditional um architecture but this has been you know the idea of designing digital twins in the metaverse and experiencing it i think it's fascinating and i'm really keen to carry on exploring wonderful all right thank you so much nicola and for all Thanks of you for me. yeah listening and watching and we'll see you in the next episode of the visual storytelling today podcast have a great thanks very much Bye-bye. Visual Storytelling Today is recorded in Miami, Florida. The show is published exclusively by Visual Storytelling Institute. Learn more at visualstorytell.com. You can subscribe to this podcast on the iTunes Store. Until next time, don't let your big story wait to be told.